glorious Lockyer Valley. It is one of the most scenic areas of southeast Queensland, but it's also a place of great tragedy. This is Nada Lagoon. Now to a majority of people, this would just be a normal park, a place to come for a picnic, maybe to look at the historic tractor, but this park has a dark history. And today, we're going to explore some of that dark history. Join me as we do Mysteries and Musings, the dark history of the Lockyer Valley. Behind me here is Nada Lagoon, a place of recreation for over a century to the people of Laidley and the Lockyer Valley. For many people, this is a place of rest and relaxation. But there is a darker history here, dating back to the 1860s. From the death of a young boy to the tragic loss of a gentleman who just wanted to go for a swim. It isn't a place of just accidental drownings but a place of great mystery. For the deaths of these people seems to be somehow connected. So what is it about this location that has drawn me here today for the dark history? Well, let's run through some of the stories, shall we? On December 5th of 1862, a three-year-old boy by the name of Alexander Riley was down at this lagoon, having a swim with his friends. When his brother left to return home with the parents, the parents asked around dinner time where the son was, and his brother said that he was down playing with his imaginary friend. The family went down to collect him from the lagoon, but they couldn't find him. The search continued for several hours and eventually Alexander was found wedged into the roots of a tree as if stuffed there. Now there was an inquiry but by early 1863 they could not find a culprit and the family all had alibis. So the case was written off as a tragic accident and Alexander's death was just another tragic story for this lagoon. The mysteries continued into 1881 when a man by the name of Andrew McCaig drowned while duck hunting. Now that may sound like just a tragic accident, but the story is far more mysterious than that. Andrew was seen heading down to the lagoon by his friends. They went duck hunting at another lagoon. They heard gunshots and assumed that he had found a duck. His friends came to the lagoon to celebrate their success in hunting ducks, only to find they couldn't see him. Searching the area, they eventually found him. His body was mysteriously in the middle of the lagoon, curled up in the fetal position. Some say he was going to the lagoon to try and get ducks, but then why didn't he take his boots off? Others say that he attempted to take his own life but he was a happy man, successful in all things in life. Others say that perhaps he fell into the lagoon, yet there are no witnesses to this, and no one heard any splashing or any unusual noises at the time. Also, there were no ducks shot in the area, so if he was retrieving a duck, where did the duck go? An autopsy found that he had died from drowning, but that his body was seized up in a very unusual position. Eventually, it was written off as an accidental death. 
Now you may say that those two were just tragic accidents, but the story continues. On July 28th of 1907, 55-year-old farmer William Taylor was seen about 7 p.m. down here at the lagoon. He was happy, had a good life, children, a wife. He was just going for a casual walk. Only a short time later, his clothes were discovered just at the edge of the lagoon. And his body was recovered the next day. Witnesses say he was in good spirits and an excellent swimmer. Again, his body was curled up as if convulsing. An inquest into the death found suspicious circumstances, but nothing that could lead them to an answer as to how he died, why his clothes were taken off, or why a sum of money was missing from his body. Was it a robbery gone wrong? Who knows? The thing about all of these drownings is they may all just be coincidences, but each of them has a mysterious element to them that can't be explained. How did the boy get wedged under the tree in calm weather? How did the hunter end up in the middle of the lagoon fully clothed and convulsed into a curled fetal position? How did the father, who was happy with his life, end up in the middle of the lagoon in the same fetal position at the same location. Is there some kind of mysterious force at the lagoon? But it's not just the tragic deaths at this lagoon that draw us here. There's the stories of the ghosts that are seen. This park was the gathering place for soldiers who headed off to World War I. They gathered at this park before marching out. Behind me in the park are the tragic shooting deaths of a mother and a father. Different families same location. Just behind the camera here is the sawmill where a tragic death of a young boy occurred under mysterious circumstances. But not only that, they say this location is haunted. From the boy who died in the sawmill to hearing cries in the lagoon at night and the mysterious woman who runs across the suspension bridge begging people not to cross. Is all of this connected? Or is it all just historic coincidence? Whatever, this lagoon is surrounded with tragic stories. And I'm just here to tell them.